His goodness is just so good, it just flows, it just rolls. It's how good is your goodness? Is your goodness running after him? He can't help but who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 Well, it really, uh, like I said earlier, starting out, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, this is, that's one reason why I like Sunday school. Really, Sunday school is, uh, it, it really, it is, Brother Bud, it really is a primer, but it, it's, to me, to me. I love it when other people start talking. Because then, especially when things that you've been sensing and hearing all week long, and then all of a sudden, it, Brother Ed brings something out in Sunday school, and then all of a sudden, somebody else. We make fun of it. We call it popcorn. But if really, if we're listening deep down inside, if we keep hearing what the Spirit's saying, he's, he's witnessing to everything that everybody is saying. That's his goodness. That's his goodness. Are you cold, Mom? I went from freezing till now I'm like... Yeah. Hallelujah. But really, I love Sunday school. I, I really do. I always loved Sunday school. I really did. I, I've always, especially when I got into the adult class because I'd grown up. <laughs> you know? And not realizing that all those years, what were in between, it was just to get me to the adult class. I really never understood the whole thing. I thought, seriously, I thought once you got into the adult class, you could just kick back and relax because you've made it. Seriously. Because down in those younger classes, this. You know, you either had a good teacher or you had some teachers who really wanted to get it in you and they used a little bit of force to get it in you. And then they would start making you remember things and all oh, you got to do your memory verses and you got to do all that. But once you get into your Sunday school class, oh, you don't have to worry about it. You can scoop. You can skate along. Until you start getting over into Christ-like fellowship Sunday school class. The adult class. Because I've, re I've learned since I've been in the class, there's responsibility. There really is responsibility. And I don't know if it's because of age or just the wisdom that God grants on on us as you do get older, that you start to realize a lot of the stuff that we used to say when we were young and cocky and full of everything, we've learned to really harness our tongue. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes God will let you, he can let you run it if you want, if he wants you to. But really, there's a great thing about being in the harness of the Lord. We don't like it. We really don't. But all the songs that we sang today, everything is because of the harness. Because he wants to show you off. He wants to show you off. So, I started on this, this journey we've been on. And really, this journey has been really like a, a walk of, well, it can get personal, individually, okay? And 
I, I'm trying not to look at it individually, but as we said today in Sunday school, the thing what's right there in front of your eyes is what you're always seeing. Isn't that what, isn't that what you said today, Ron? Yeah. Remember I said about your words, right? Yeah. But no, seriously, it, it's, I, I don't want to look at it as an individual thing. I want, I'm looking at it because this house has been birthed out of a corporate thing. It's not on an individual basis. Even though the enemy will try coming in and slipping in these things and these thoughts for individual things, it's not that. The whole main focus of Christ, life, is a corporate thing. And when you've been so individual your whole life, it's hard to flip a switch, as Brother Ed would say. Just flip the switch. Remember when he talked about that one time in Sunday school? It's like just flipping on the switch. But if we flipped on God's switch from off to his brilliance, we would burn up. Because the heat, the intensity would be beyond everything that we can handle. So he's almost like a dimmer. He gradually, a little foggy in the pan, gradually turning up the heat. So, so I've been on this journey. We've been on this journey. And we're down to this man, Jonathan. And a few weeks ago, well, it's been probably a month or so ago, I got all hooked up because Brother Kelly mentioned something in his book about the chosen choose ye this day, and I started reading the book, and remember, it got me all messed up, and I was like, oh my Lord, we even went out so much, we printed out copies, because we couldn't, printed up books and handed them out, and, and then I started reading it again. And I'm not going down that road again. But it's a good principle. Every day we have to make this choice. Every day we're gonna make this choice. And so we come down to Jonathan's second war that he actually started. Think about it. The first war he started, and the second war he started. It sounds like a typical Christian. Let's start a war. <laughs> I'm going to go to the devil's house, and I want to start a war. I was like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong with you, buddy? But he knew something inside, which he really didn't know what it was. But if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? I think we said that today in Sunday school, right? So we got down into here, and so we, he, he won his second battle. He won his second battle. Well, let's clarify it. God won the battle for him. All right? God won it. And the whole corporate Israel got to join in, and they got all the spoils. They got to do it. All right? But I'm down here in this verse 24, and, and how Brother Kelly did it in his book. He, he broke it up in the 10 verses at a time. And he got down into here and this is when, I probably should just read it. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm going to read it. Because I, I'm, I really, I'm starting to learn. I'm starting to learn. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a slow learner. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. But I'm starting to learn. And how I ended up learning is because God kind of opened my eyes a little bit when I reading this, just dealing with this. Not only in my own personal life, but you can start seeing things that are going on, and you start hearing things in situations that start going on, and you start asking God questions. God, why are all these things going on? And he starts revealing things. So I'm going to start with this. Verse, 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 24, and I'm going to read it out of the King James Version because we have it on the overhead. Because there is a word in here 
that I cannot pronounce. when we get down in there. So I just want to get going, all right? And I'm going to need help. I know what the word means because I got the Webster's Dictionary out and looked it up. So I know what the word means. So I'm going to get going, all right? So let's scoot along. Let's move along, little man. All right, verse 24. And the men of Israel were in distress that day. They just had a victory in their distress. This is the reason why. For Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on my enemy, on my enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. See, according to my Bible version, it says, Paul's rash vow, and this is what we know is his second vow, and I don't even want to get in, involved in any of that, all right? Because the flesh man always says stuff that, I've heard this a lot of times in my life, you have constipation of the brain and diarrhea of the mouth. That's just the carnal man, all right? That goes for every one of us, from the oldest to the youngest. Ed went over like a lead balloon, but it's the truth, because we all know it. It's true, right? Has anybody said stuff that you wish you never said before? I know for a lot of times, there's a lot of things I've said from this pulpit right here in the last year and one month that I wish I would have never said. And God, I wish I could take it back, but it's already been burned in somebody's mind. That's right. He always takes the good, the bad, and turns it to good for those who love him. And it goes after if you have a pure heart. It, this whole thing, this whole chapter, this whole thing's about the heart. It's all about a heart issue. Matter of fact, the whole thing about God is about the heart. Reader's Digest version, verse twenty-five. And all and all they of the land had come to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of his rod that was in his hand, so he had something in his hand. What's in your hand? And he dipped it in the honeycomb and put, it, and put his hand to his mouth. And his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Verse 29. Then said Jonathan. Jonathan said this. My father hath troubled the land. Brother Kelly says he got a revelation when he put the honey to his mouth that his father did one thing, he troubled the people or the land. He didn't curse the land, he cursed the people. But these people said, what did it say? Jonathan said he troubled the land. Coinciding the people and the land are one. I'll get into that. I pray you how my, my eyes have been enlightened. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Our eyes have been enlightened because I've tasted a little honey. Just a little honey. Just a little honey. How much more happily the people would have eaten freely today of the spoils of their enemies which they have found. For if they have not 
not been now as much greater slaughter among the Philistines. Speaking, if you would have ate, you would have wiped them out more. You would have conquered all your enemies. Conquered them all. And they smote the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Algelion. And the people were very faint. And I don't, oh, yes, do I have to, Lord? Yeah, I'm going to read the next couple verses. And the people flew upon the spoils. They were so hungry, they took the sheep, the ox, the calves, and they slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with the blood. This is not a good thing, folks. This is not a good thing. The Bible, or the Word, or Jesus, or God, told him straightly back in, I think it was in, Le he's got it written down in here, Leviticus, don't eat anything with blood. You don't eat it. You, don't want, you want me to read what Brother Kelly says about it? Uh, let me think here. Let me see. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. If you are hungry enough, you will eat anything. And he uses 2 Kings Chapter 6 and chapter 7. You go home and read it. Old order doesn't put the fire of the Spirit to its meat. That was me. From one Sunday school class to the next Sunday school class till I finally I got to the adult class where the meat was and I just took it for granted. I never put the fire of the Holy Spirit to it. Remember pastor used to say all this? If you don't believe me, go home and read it. Go home. You go home and search it out. Remember he used to say this all the time. I remember he used to say this all the time. Sometimes we, see, we had to drive 70 miles home from church. And he used to be mad going home, Right? And I'm not picking on my dad because I love my dad. But he would be mad going home because of something what Brother Sexton would say in church what went cross grain to what he was raised on. Amen. So he made him dig into the word. Me, I'm just the opposite. I was lazy. I took the word for granted. From what anybody would say. But see, what happens was, when you hit the adult class, the trials and the testings turn a little bit. Seriously, I mean, it's naturally, right? When we were kids, we got, we got to do things. We had a little bit. Remember when you did something bad when you were little? Like EJ's age, and your parents would take you out and spank you, and, right? And then when you got a little older, they just started talking to you a little bit. But when you became a man or an adult, it was a totally different aspect of things. They would do some crazy stuff, your parents. They would do some crazy stuff. They would do stuff and wouldn't say a word, but you knew inside that they knew that you knew that they knew what you were doing. Is it true? Ah, that was just my house. So I want to get down, I want to get back up here. I'm going to read a few things and then we'll go on. This is all Brother Kelly. This is all Brother Kelly. I'm just reading what Brother Kelly said, all right? I don't want to do with what he said, but like I said, and we've all did, we all do this. We take somebody else's words, and God will start talking to you in the midst of it, and then you start listening to the Spirit, and guess what? It starts growing. Yes. It's, like the, it's like this rod. Remember last week when I said about the rod? It, it, it is a staff, but really it's a branch. And it gets you right down into the branch man. But really, if you break that word all the way down to its root meaning, it means to stretch you. 
And that's what, that's what the stability, the stick does. It starts stabilizing you. It stretches you. It's not so much bringing you this way. It's bringing you this way. It's like a good root on a tree. It's so you can stand in the midst of a dark and perverse nation. All right? The head and shoulder systems distress God's people by enduring, commanding, or ordering God's people that they would be cursed if anybody ate any food. 1 Peter 5.3 Saul must have avenged, rage, fury of vengeance so that his position is not threatened it's not threatened. He's got a position. The flesh will always do that. If somebody comes against you, it's going to rise up and is going to do something crazy. Literally. How do you know? Go to work. Tell your boss you're taking over. And see how that goes over. <laughs> see if it works. See if it works. I got one better. Go home, tell your spouse, you're taking over. <laughs> I'm kidding, babe. I'm kidding. I know you think, never mind, I'm going to not go down that road. That's Matthew 2, 1 through 18. That's Herod. Remember Herod, the crazy king? who went and killed all the kids because of a dream or because of a star? Remember? Flesh. Jonathan did not hear Saul's oath. The end of his rod is the end time truth of Ephesians 4.11. And I'm going to get into that because God's kind of opened my eyes in this. I'm, I'm going to deal with this word honey. And then this is where a lot of things took place this morning. His eyes were enlightened. This word is found also in Job 33, 30, Psalms 97, 4, and it means to make luminous or light or the break of day or glorious kindle, give or show light to set on fire. If our God's a consuming fire and we're supposed to be like him, guess what you're supposed to be? A consuming fire, right? I don't know if it's so much to burn somebody else up, but more to burn up your own flesh. Throw on you, right? Every priest, right? When the priest, you, you look at the layout of the tabernacle and everything. The priest had to keep the fire going. God lit it once and then it was up to the priests to keep the fire going. That was outside and inside to the candles. The priests had to do all that. But outside is where you had to bring all your carnality and let it get burnt up out there. All right? We all know that. Do we? See, I thought I knew something, and guess what? Yep, it's changing. It's changing. I, I, see, I don't like talking. I do love talking about my father. I really do. But really, I remember him always said, things that he used to believe 20, 30, 40 years ago, because God, it's a living word. It's constantly changing. You can't stay put in this. It's got to be this way, this way. Because every now and then, remember, remember Dale came in and he said every now and then God throws in a good curveball? He does. But we can't stay so rigid in certain areas. Now, I'm not talking just, yeah, I'm talking to everybody. 
We can't be so rigid in one thing because it's a living word. It's growing. It's constantly moving. Because things will change. You get a better enlightened. We prophesy in part because we... See? I didn't even have to say that. But you know what? That could be wrong. It's no, I do. You can genosco all you want. But I tell you what, when I went up to her, not here, but in, I didn't say I genosco you. I do you. I do. So I want to get over here into this, this word honey. Honey. I love honey. I really do. Honey's good for you. This is what Brother Kelly said. Honey is the word of God. Now, this is what happens when you get into the adult Sunday school class, folks. You start getting responsibilities. You're no longer under your mom and dad. You're under those tutors anymore. Now you're under the tutors of the Holy Ghost. And guess what happens? The only way you're going to find the Holy Ghost How are you going to find the Holy Ghost? He's inside you. How do you get in there? One thing about the word. God will not violate his word. And it says there's nothing new under the sun. So everything that every one of us is going under or is happening to, God's word will back it up. This is why so, so many times the word says, try the spirits, see if they be in God. What are you going to try the spirits with? Somebody else? Or are you going to back it up with the word of God? You've got to back it up with something which is true, what is unmovable. See, I knew that. I learned that in Sunday school. But when I got to the adult class, guess what? It became life. It had to become a part of me. Not realizing that that word back in the day, in the Sunday school, God in his magnificent way was instilling it. He was weaving it into the midst of my fabric and in the midst of your fabric and we never even knew it. Now I'm talking to people who was born and raised in the church. How do I know? How do you know? I was one of the ones standing at the back of the church or in the back seat of the church sleeping all the time. And God was doing something. Never realizing it. And there are other flavors. See, this is true about one thing about God. We talked about the marking of God today without saying the word mark. God marks families. He marks families. He calls everybody, but he marks families. And there's different markings for different families. There are. Listen, there's things that I can get away with that you can't get away with, but there's things that you can get away with that I can't get away with. It's part of the mark. But the mark is for one purpose. It's so every joint can supply. It's true, right? Your parents were always harder on you than they were the neighbors. So I'm going to want to read some verses. I want to read some verses that Brother Kelly's got written out. All right? First one he's got, and this is all about honey. Exodus 3, 8. I... And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of Egypt, of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, out of the, yeah, out of the land unto a good land and large. Listen to this. And unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place 
of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Presbyterites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites. Now, when you get all the way down into here, down to Paul, I mean, down into Saul, I'm sorry, Saul and them, they just walked into the woods and the honey was there. Well, what do you expect? God said he was bringing them into a land was flowing with milk and honey. God's taking a natural thing to show us the end time, folks, a spiritual aspect. Psalms 81.16. Is she putting those up there? Were you supposed to... Are you going to put them up, Keela, or no? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have said something to you. Forgive me. Psalms 81.16. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey and out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. God gives us nothing but the best. If you want second best, things from God, go ahead. But I want the best. You can have the best. But he does tell us to prefer your brother over yourself. So he is telling us to take the second place. But I want the best that he has. This is one of my favorite verses right here. Proverbs 24, 13. My son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb because it is sweet to thy taste. 14, verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. And we know who wisdom is. Jesus, when thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. We could all get up and do a happy dance right now. But this is, this is not youth group, this is church. This is church, folks. You get what's happening here? Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Everybody wants a sign? Everybody wants a sign. Behold, a virgin, a virgin, 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 shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse evil and choose the good. So if you want to do good, Eat the honey. You want to do good? We can, we can look at the negative side if you want. You want to look at the negative side? Don't eat honey. Don't eat the word. Don't eat it. Don't eat the word. Don't have to. But if you want good all your days, this is, the, this is God. This is, this is what the word says. We're either going to believe it or not going to believe it. The word says, you want, you want good? Eat honey. Eat butter and honey. Butter always speaks of the, the richness, the good things, the fat things of God. I mean, have anybody seen my grandbaby lately? She's eating some good milk. So if you want good, eat honey. Ezekiel 3, verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son. 
So now we're not just talking to everybody. He's talking to his son. Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. If you want to know what he's talking about, go back and read chapter 2. All right? So I opened my mouth. So you got to do something. You got to be willing to obey and step out or whatever you want to say and just do it. Open my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said and he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. I tell you what, you get it in your life, basically, this is the way I'm taking it. This is my interpretation of that thing. If you get it in your life and you get a walking around and you're talking, guess what's going to happen? You start getting up to next to people, it just starts flowing out and it becomes sweet. It really does. The Word of God is so sweet. It's so good. It really is. And it's not just the good things. You know, the sweet, mushy things, you know, like we're going to live forever. You know, not just that thing. Things that will make you stable. That you ain't tossed to and fro by every wind. Wind. All right? Revelation 10, verse 9. And I went and looked. I went unto the angel, and he said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. Eat it up. See, when I was in the younger Sunday school class, I didn't have to eat it up. But now that I'm in an older Sunday school class and the adult Sunday class, I have to eat it up. I don't have to. You don't have to but I want the good things of God. I want the good things of God. Because you know why? There's enough bad things in this world. I want the good things of God. Amen. Simple as that. Amen. Take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. Oh, we don't like that bitter. We don't like the bitterness. Well, you know what? Guess what? Just you got to trust God in the midst of all this thing. You've got to have faith in all this. That his word is true. He's going to bring it to pass. Just, just trust him, all right? But it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. And I took the book, I took the little book out of the angel's hands and ate it, ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I've eaten it, it made my belly bitter but that's all right that's all right so I want to do this we ate you ate the honey you get enlightened all right I'm gonna read my favorite verse one of my favorite verses you know I know it's my favorite verses this is one of my verses I had to memorize when I was a little kid and it became one of my it became one of my favorite verses because it became life. It's one thing to memorize something, but when that memorization starts turning into life and it starts growing inside you, guess what happens? It becomes your favorite. Psalms 119.105. None. N U N. See, you know, I, I don't know, in colleges, they can just click it and it'd shoot to it. I don't know why, I, I don't know. It, it's not you, Kayla. Believe you me, it's not you. I hope, I literally hope and pray that you're hearing what I'm saying. Literally, I hope and pray that you're hearing what I'm saying. Because this verse is going to help 
all of you young kids out. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You want to know where you're going? Eat the word. It's the only thing that's going to keep you. And it's the only thing that's going to keep your, your light shining. See, we're so busy wanting to shine. We're going to shine. Really? I want to be so I don't trip over anything. That scripture has kept me. So I got looking into this word honey, Mr. Strong's and his great things. You know what honey means? You know what the, the definition of honey is? Gummy, sticky, very spiritual. You, but you think about it. You're right, Mom. You think about it. You eat honey. You eat the word. It's going to start sticking inside of places inside of you. It'll never leave you. Remember, you could walk down the road, right? You're walking down the road. and You ever walk down the road on a hot day, and, and you pull up like this, and the gum comes up with your shoe, and it take, you're sitting down trying to get that out. But you know what? Know something about the Word of God? Once it's inside there and it gets stamped, stepped on by the Holy Ghost, it ain't never getting out of there. I, you can run. David said, I can go to hell, and you're going to be there. So brother, uh, bring, bring, bring Strong's, 56 times this verse, was, that word honey was used in the Old Testament. 56 times. I was like, Lord, that's an awful lot of scriptures just to read what it means. And literally, my eye went right to this one verse. But I can't just read the one verse. I've got to read the whole thing. Because if you read that one verse, you take out the whole thing out of context, and you've got to leave it in context, because that's the way God... See, when you have good honey, it's better on a good Kentucky Fried Chicken biscuit. <laughs> and if you're really smart... You get the butter, what's in the package, and you can smear that on there and then put the honey over top of it. We might be doing Kentucky Fried Chicken today, baby. I'm getting hungry. So I want to read this. I want to read the whole eighth chapter of Deuteronomy. And I don't think it's coincidence Deuteronomy is the fifth book. We're reading chapters 8. It's just, call me coincidence. No. The title of this is Remember Your Lord. Remember the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 1 8. What did I say? 1 8? We can start there if you want, but no, I, I, I'm my dyslexic. Lord, forgive me, forgive me. Deuteronomy eight one. And this is where I'm going to probably need help on a word. All right. All the commandments which I have commanded thee this day, shall ye observe to do. Comma. That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land Can we make it simple? You want to make it really simple? You're the land. God placed a pearl inside of you. He went and sold everything to buy you. You're the land. That you may live, we all want to live, we all want to multiply, 
and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God had led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. For what purpose? To humble thee. And to prove thee. And to know thou what was in thy heart. Stop. Whether thou wouldest keep his commands or no. This is what God was talking to them about. But really, this is what he's talking to us about. Verse 3. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Anybody been hungry? Anybody been hungry? Seriously. I've been hungry. And not just because I'm talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken either. I've been hungry. And to feed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, and neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread alone only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord thy God doth man live. This is what I was saying. I looked at it this way. When I was in Sunday school, in the kids' Sunday school, I was getting manna. But see, the children of Israel, this is funny about this whole chapter. God never told them, never told them that when you go in the land, the manna is going to get cut off. And this is what happens when you go from the children's Sunday school class into the adult Sunday school class, the manna gets cut off, and now you have to go out and you have to start getting your own food. Daily. Seriously. Because I'm going to tell you what, like I said, God's words, it's, it's living. It's alive. And he does put truths in there from Sunday school in, and it, it just keeps you. It, Literally what it does, it, it drives you to keep going out for more food. you got to listen to this. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. Literally, their mantle that God placed on them, the mantle ain't going to wither away. And guess what? Were their foot treaded? Guess what? What's the Bible say about wherever your foot is, it's yours, right? And we can walk on the heads of the enemy. And guess what? Do we believe it? The Word says we can do it, so I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. The Word says we can do it. We can do it. Thou shalt consider in thy heart. See, it's always going to come down to our hearts. It's always going to be our heart. That as a man chases his son... So the Lord thy God chases thee. Yeah. A father to a son. That's what this whole thing's about, is a father to a son. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. We're good. We're good people. A land, listen to this, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, of depth that springeth out of the valleys and the hills. So whenever we're in the mountaintop, guess what? There's a well there. But guess what? When we go down into the valley, guess what? There's a well down there. And it just springs up. We got this favorite song we got, Spring Up, O Well, Within My Soul. Remember, let's not hit the rock, speak to the rock. Now I lost my place. Jesus, help me. Eight, eight. Eight, eight. And the land of the wheat and barley and vines and figs and pomegranates 
and the lands of olive, of oil, olives, and honey. Remember when back when Brother Kelly put down there about the fivefold ministry? This is the fivefold ministry at work. You just look at it of each one of these ingredients, uh, each one of these things that he said. The wheat is always the first fruit. The barley, oh, the wheat, the apostle. First fruit. The sent one, first fruit. But the barley, the prophets. Barley is good for one thing. I looked it up. It's good for roughage. See, we, we, want to, we, lo we love the prophets when they come in and speak all the good, light, nice, sweet things to us. But I'll tell you what, we don't like the prophets like the Paul Tafoya early days, do we? And everybody who's been around long enough knows exactly what I'm talking about. The vines, the evangelists. Vines are what? They spread out, right? How long do you go out in our woods, right? There's vines all over the place, right? They just go, you cut them down and those stupid things just grow all over the place. That's the evangelist. You try cutting them down and guess what happens? More come back. Fig trees. That's the pastors. And the pomegranates. Teachers. A land, listen, and the most of all of it, oil, olive, the Christ, the anointing, with the honey, the word. <laughs> Together. A land therein thou shalt eat bread without, this is the word. Is it up there? What in the world is that word? Scarceness? Can I read that out of the basic English? Where there will be bread for you in full measure. And you will be in need of nothing. A land where the very stones and iron are iron and from whose hills you may get copper. All out of this word, honey. Honey. I'm almost done. Almost done. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. And when we come to full measure, full stature, it isn't someday down in the far future, it's today. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him thanks. Do we want to go into the bewares? See, God always has a warning. He read all this. He came all the way down to 10. And then for verse 11, there's a warning. And it goes all the way through. And I'm not going to do it. But beware. Beware. Go home and read it. Go home and read it. I'm reading it. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. And not keeping his commands and his judgments, and his statutes, when I have commanded thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt therein, and when, the, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy, good is, and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. See, that's what God does when he blesses you. He brings you into this land, and he's going to multiply everything that... See, we like adding, but God doesn't add, he multiplies. 
Then thy heart be lifted up. See, it's always going to come down to a heart issue. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage, who has led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein thou were fiery serpents and scorpions and droughts where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of a rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end. And thou sayest in thy heart, My power and my might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. This is what happened to Saul. This is exactly what happened to Saul. God set him up because this is what the people wanted. And it only took him two years before he came to this part. He thought he did all that. Listen, and God worked through every one of his, every one of his wars. God gave him victory. That's how subtle it is. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that given thee power to get, get wealth. It is he. Yes, that's right, amen. That's why you always bring him your first fruits. And I'm not just talking money, but I am talking money. You want to have money? Give God your first fruit. Amen. Give it to him. It is. It's more than tithe. See, this is. See, I always thought it was tithe, and I, I, I got brought into the adult Sunday school class. But thou remember thy Lord, thy God. He has given thee wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swears unto the fathers, as it is to this day. And it shall be, if thou do. Do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. I, I testify, not me, but him, testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. I don't think it's changed. I really, I don't. Because if we take the concept, this is, I had this thought the other day. We take the concept, we're on this side of the cross, right? And we see all the shadows of stuff down here what I'm dealing with now. I'm almost wondering, was it here in that light, in that brightness of that light, what shined through the thing that cast all this stuff down there? What are you saying? If he said, thou shalt surely perish, it almost takes place that you could perish on this side. Remember Noah? All the animals were in the boat. The eight souls were in the boat. And God shut the door. This is just a warning. We're in the adult Sunday school class. The adult Sunday school class has responsibilities. And that's what we don't like, is responsibilities. I never did. I love playing house. You heard the story. I played house, played pastor as a kid. Now I ain't playing house no more. I thought I was, you know, getting married and having a family and all that, playing house, thought that was good. Not realizing, you know what? There's responsibilities. You got other lives in your hands. Absolutely. And God holds you accountable Absolutely. for them. Amen. Well, what if they, there is no what ifs. No excuse, remember? That was, that was Saul's biggest problem. He always blamed it on somebody else. 
As a nation which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall you surely perish, because ye would not be obedient to the voice, the voice, the Spirit, the Word, they match together. The voice of the Lord your God. Now, I can go over to Ephesians 4.11 and read that, because that's that it coincides together. It fits in there so perfect. But Brother Ed covered it so well in Sunday school class. I don't want to touch it. But really, that's what the whole thing's all about. It's not to destroy us. It's to make us together. Because now what, Brother Ed? We're in chapter what? Four? We're in chapter four. Unity and love. Amen? Amen. 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 Say, thank you, Pastor, that we're out of this one. <laughs> See, you know what? As I'm closing. Closing number one. I always wanted to say that. I don't know why. Everybody else got to. But I always had this thing. If you look at all the wars that Israel went through, they all progressively got worse. And then now these, these who we're dealing with now, Saul... He had all his wars. Jonathan had his wars. Then they're together wars. And guess what the climax of those wars were? Goliath. Where those two who had victories in all those other wars couldn't conquer this one. They had somebody else who had to come in and take care of that battle. Jesus. Jesus.